Warm greetings to all of you. Myself, Krishna Bala, student of Silver Hills High Secondary School, Korikod. I am here to present before you an essay titled Dawn of an Emotive Poetic Genre by M. Thomas Matthew. On certain occasions, the charioteers of history lets loose the bridles and allows the horses of time to gallop at will. Things happen in a lightning speed. The recipients of blessings line up displaying eagerness and curiosity. They give authorship to things that nobody have ever thought of. A nation steeped in languor wakes up and is drawn into the festivities of the dawn of a new era. The rationale of the creator's choice is unpredictable and our logic is limited to the limitations of only known experiences. Chavara is a distinguished personality who demands of us the humility of wisdom in a reserveless measure. What is offered to Chavara is the authorship of actions that we can only look upon with a sense of wonder, eyes wide open. History has not analyzed his achievements adequately. Will that ever be done? What is vested on Chavara as the priest of a minority community is the fulfillment of the apostolic mission. However, outside of that mission, the services that he performed modernized the thought process and lifestyle of a whole society. Chavara is a pioneer in several fields, and my attempt is to focus on one of them, that is Martyrdom of Anastasia, a short epic poem written by Chavara in 1861. The time frame of 1861 and the genre of epic poetry demand some explanation. It was in 1907 that Kumaranashan's Veena Bhuva was released. Veena Bhuva is the beginning of the declaration of a high tide of individuality in Malayalam poetry. However, half a century prior to Veena Bhuva, Martyrdom of Anastasia was released. It was the experimentation of a poetic style not familiar to Malayalis till then. The history of Malayalam poetry tells us that it was a time when poetry was debased into a show of amorous and erotic sentiments and expression of sapless refuge of hackneyed poetic technique. Exceptions apart, this was the general trend. It cannot be overlooked that some of the exceptions were noteworthy. But the fact is that those who were passionate about poetry did not look at poetry as the realization of a distressing and painful quest of expressing emotions. They were gratified that they were serving their language by means of providing the pyrotechnics and fireworks of strange imaginations. Chavara was not impassioned about poetry. That is why the liabilities inflicted by the tradition of contemporary poetry did not bother him. A clear vision and an apostolic compulsion to stir a nation into progression by fulfilling the mandate kept him busy. The thought of occupying a space in Malayalam poetry had not bothered him. He was governed by certain other thoughts and anxieties. That was a time when certain crises emerged in the Kerala church. It was a juncture when the thorns of the foreign occupations inflicted wounds on the Kerala church. As a result, we know that the driving force of all his actions is the dream of a church rich in self-awareness and self-reliance. All his actions has the backing of a strong thought process that the roots should be indigenous and the growth should be systematic. While clarifying Coleridge's theme, Herbert Reed says that the striking aspect of romantic revolution is the change brought in the concept of poetry. He clarifies that while explaining the difference between shape and form, the organic form precedes shape and the shape in turn meets a need of a particular expression. Look at the message poems that came up in Malayalam and Sanskrit following Mega Sandesham. A message poem movement even came into being. A hero separated from his soulmate and a heroine staying far away and a messenger to Korea, the hero's message. The detailed description 
of the path and the road to the heroine and then the message itself in one or two slogans. This is the style that message poems are expected to follow without any change. In an instant in Mega Sandesham, there is an instruction that the messenger has to take a detour. Not a single poet has ever tried to change the form even to a minor extent. It is impossible to have a messenger who knows the direction to the heroine without the description from the hero. This is form, a framework determined well in advance of the shaping of expressions. The only workload of the poet is to load the form with the slogas by the means of the meter, mantakranta, but the state of shape is quite different. Professor Mundashedi states that form takes different shapes according to expressions. The concept of organic form is based on this. Matyadam of Anastasia is the first poetic work in Malayalam based on this concept. Till Emperor Constantine embraced Christianity, the Roman Empire and its rulers were practicing the various possibilities of religious persecutions. That was the age that gave the world the lesson that even if sent to gallows, faith could not be destroyed. Martyrdom of Anastasia reflects this lesson. The narration is blessed with a singular focus on the central theme of the poet, which does not allow the eye to gaze around the surrounding beauty. The poem has a lot of situations which tempt a poet to indulge in fascinating descriptions with decorative words, but the poet tries to focus on the central point and experiment how the shower of expression from the central point creates rainbows in the mind. He does not go to further descriptions. That is what make Martyrdom of Anastasia a short epic poem. Anastasia was beautiful in appearance and strong was her faith. She led a meditative life enjoying the affection and love of Mother Sophia's convent. She was devoted to Christ, the bridegroom. Her unearthly beauty and life of faith provoked the emperor and the henchmen. She was called to the palace to force herself to yield to his will. Nobody could decline the royal decree. The mother superior was aware of the nature of fate she was going to confront. Therefore, the farewell of Anastasia took these lines. Calls you with longing love, go, be quick. Recall your former days of joy. Days your king held out his arms to clasp you with love. Christ the king, her lovely groom, welcomed her into bliss with him. Dwells of marvel, pearls of price, all heaped on her by Lord Divine. He held her close to him with love, and she loved him deep with warmth sublime. Yes, the journey was heaven bound, and the mother superior was sure about Anastasia's faith that it was not the one which was subservient to physical compulsion. The latter part of the poem proves that the mother was right. The men in power tried to change her mind with tempting offers. When failed, they subjected her to persecution, but that too failed. Anastasia courted martyrdom. Therefore, Anastasia is a name worth keeping in mind of believers who were subjected to persecution and temptations. The brave declaration of her faith is the eloquent part of the poem. Straightforwardness or truthfulness is the hallmark of the poem. Chavara was able to initiate a style that is rich in the strength of emotions. History keeps his name in the forefront of those who were responsible for the reawakening of Kerala. The history of poetry also does the same with respect. Thank you.